Hey guys, welcome back. Here is the episode 2 of Frontend Engineering Masterclass and this is a completely free masterclass. It will be on YouTube as you all know. So let, let's get started with the episode 2. So before I get started, uh, for the first episode, a lot of you complained that uh, the voice, the audio was a bit low. So I have adjusted everything. So from now on, there won't be any issues with the audio. Okay, just wanted to assure that. Okay, so here we are for the Frontend Engineering episode 2 where we discuss about the critical aspects of when a website actually renders. So you might actually go to tubalon.tech or facebook.com, google.com or whatever website it is, right? So you immediately see with something on the screen. You don't see the blank screen. If you see a blank screen, there's an issue, right? But you don't. Most of the time you see something, either a loading screen or a skeleton or at least some image or something on the screen that's telling that there is something happening on the background, right? So how is browser able to show these things to you? There are a lot of things happening on the background. These are the four main steps. We'll look into each and every step one by one. Okay, but it's really essential for you to understand these four steps because you might have heard this term called optimizing the performance, right? So if you don't know, like, what are you optimizing, then you won't be able to do it. I know, like, you know, if you take, if you talk in terms of React, you have this memo, you have this use callback hook, like, you know, you, you can use the CDN to optimize your rendering of your application. Those are fine. Yeah, they are critical. Those are fine. But when you, have, when you, know, when you don't know, like, which phase of the rendering process you're optimizing to, you won't be able to use a proper technique to do it. Who knows, you might be doing it worse, right? So it's very essential to understand the four steps involved in displaying a website on the screen so that you can identify where your application is lacking, sorry, and you can optimize it. So let's learn about these four steps. Okay, I, this lecture, in this particular lecture, that, I mean, in this particular episode, sorry, there won't be any optimizing lessons. We'll do that uh, eventually in other episodes. But this episode is all about learning about basics. Okay. So let's first learn about what is DOM and CSOM. Okay. I know, uh, I know like 98% of you know what is DOM is, but uh, some of you might not know what is CSOM is. So let's get started with that. Let me scroll down a bit. Okay. What is it? What exactly is DOM? So let's say your, your website is something like this. So here you will have like a navbar, let's say you'll have a navbar here, a pretty good navbar that you have built. Okay. So let's add a color to it. Okay. And then let's say you have like a sidebar, like say you're like building some kind of dashboard. So we'll have a sidebar here. Okay. And then couple of, oops, couple of analytics card. You guys know what is analytics card, right? So like, you know, you'll have these graphs and all those stuff. So let's say we are building those type of thing. So here we'll have some graphs and you can say we here we'll have some table, typical dashboard layout. Okay, here we'll have some layout. So I mean, sorry, table. So this is how your website might look like, right? So this is how you plan to do it and this is how you'll do it. So how is this rendering? So let's let's take a, a first step. The first step here is DOM and CSOM. So what exactly is DOM? So to build this layout, you'll use some HTML tags, correct? You'll use head tag, you'll use body tag, you'll use the nav tag, uh, divs, of course, divs, article, section, main, P tag, H1 tag, H2, so many tags, right? Images and all those stuff. So the browser needs a way to organize these things, correct? It needs a way where it can organize these things. That's what the first step is DOM. So what exactly happens in DOM? So what exactly happens in DOM? So let's, so here, let's say you initially you have, what, what is the first tag you have? It's HTML, correct? So first tag is HTML. So we'll have HTML here. And what is the next tag you'll have? You'll have body. And of course you'll have a head tag, head. So now what browser does this? Browser knows, okay, we are starting from HTML. And then what do we have inside HTML? HTML is a box. What do we have inside HTML? We have two more boxes, that is body and head. Okay, now what do we have inside body? It opens up the body, so what do we get? We get something like um, nav. So nav is for this navbar. Okay, it's a semantic tag, HTML5 tag. Okay, 
I'll teach you that as well if you don't know. Then we have this one. We usually for sidebar we use something called aside. Okay, so we have aside. Okay, let me just move this a bit. Yeah. Okay, and then we let's say we have two layouts. Let's say we use that uh, via section. So we have section. I'm gonna just say one so that I can save some space here. But imagine that there are a couple more tags. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, move this here, move this here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll add some arrow. So oops. There is an arrow here, but that isn't visible much. So I'm just drawing an arrow. Just hope you guys can visualize it. Okay. So now the browser knows, okay, we have HTML and then we have body and head as the children of HTML. And inside body, we have three more children that is nav, aside and section. So it goes inside nav. Let's say it's going to discover some more div tags, div tag, image tag and everything. It goes inside aside tag. It's going to discover some like, uh, what do you say? Paragraph tag. Let's add P here. It's going to discover some paragraph tag. And here inside this, let's say we'll add image for the logo and everything. I'm going to just keep it minimal. So, and then similarly inside section, let's say we discover some div tags. Okay. So now what browser will understand is, okay, nav is the parent of image here aside is the parent of p section here so now this is how the browser begins to trace okay it begins to map every single element to its respect to parents this way browser will know which element is related to which element now this can form a whole family tree here see parent to child parent to child parent to child now image is a sibling of p so these are like uh, siblings these are siblings these are siblings okay these are siblings something like that okay if there is any image here if there is any tag here like let's say uh, hold on not here sorry so if there is any like let's say tag here let's say up uh, next to the image we have another div inside navbar itself okay so we can map this as siblings so here we have these two here this is the image and div is the child of nav and image and div are siblings here because they are the child of single parent. Okay, they are the siblings now. Okay, similarly aside along with p tag, let's say aside also has a uh, h1 tag. h1 tag inside aside. So now p is also a child of aside and h1 is also a side of child of aside, right? So now these two will become siblings. So this is how the browser will begin to map the relationship among the uh, elements. And this whole thing we call it as DOM. Okay, so once the browser is completely is completely done with parsing these HTML code and forming these relationships, we call that as DOM. Okay, we usually get. Uh, I mean, it doesn't. It, it isn't like how it actually looks like. This is a visualization we are creating. Okay, to to basically help you guys understand. This is how the DOM looks like. Okay, and now what exactly is CSOM? Where the CSOM comes in here? Oops. Okay, let's just uh, move here. Okay, so what is CSOM? CSS OM. Okay, so the DOM full form here is document object model. Okay, it's document object model, and CSOM is cascading style sheet object model. You know, full form of CSS cascading style sheet, and OS, what is OM here? Object model. So basically, similar to DOM, browser has to construct a similar tree for CSS as well. Because CSS styles will have for body, will have for P, will have for nav, will have for div and everything, right? We'll also have for class names. So now, browser has to construct that as well. So see, same way the browser does for DOM, it's going to do it for CSS as well. Okay, so how does that do it? So let's say while parsing this body, okay, browser will look for the styles. Okay, which has the body in style sheet. Let's say for body here, let's say body. Oh, let me just increase the font size. Okay, let's say for body, we have um, background, background color red. Let's say this is the style we have for body. Okay, let's say this is the style we have for body. Now what browser does is while constructing the DOM, it's going to get this body here. Okay. And then it will check. Oh, there's a style for body here. Let's add that. Okay. It's going to map it. Okay. 
and if in case there's another style after body let's say after a couple of lines of code in your css you're going to redeclare the body again let's say you're going to redeclare the body again let's say there are a couple of css lines here uh, css code there are some more css code after that you're going to redeclare body change the background color to blue okay now browser will detect this it will update it will overwrite the background color which was red now it is blue if you do this in your browser you will see a strike mark like this in in chrome dev tools okay so now the body style is applied similarly you're going to check for all these things uh, while parsing the dom if there's any class names or id we call this as attributes okay if you have class names name id or some other things okay all these will be added for this as a metadata okay these section aside all these tags along with the tag name if you have assigned them a class name or id or anything they will be assigned to them as attributes okay in terms of general term we call it as metadata but it's actually in html term it's attributes okay so now it will also verify via attributes as well for example if you have a class name let's say um, let's say we call this as dot navbar okay nav navbar okay if you have like dot navbar and let's say for this nav you have assigned it as dot navbar an attribute class name so even this will be cross verified if it exists it will be mapped okay something like that so once all these things are done the first phase is complete okay so now what happens is in brief the browser will start parsing the html and then css it will cross verify if if there's any style associated for this tag if it does it's going to add it okay something like that this is the reason why you should not use elements selectors while writing css and you have to, you have to use it very carefully because let's say you add a style called div okay you make a style called div here and the background color would be yellow okay what happens is this div since it's a element selector browser will apply this to every div no matter wherever they are in the tree it will apply to every div because it's element selector browser will assume that you want it for apply to every element that's the reason you should always stick with either class name selectors like this or id selectors such as this oops something like this okay but in case if you need if you need a style to apply to every element you can use element selector no issues with that okay so this is how the dom and csom works they cross verify each other they'll construct a tree then what so is this done is is this is all it so is this enough to show you this website no this is the initial phase where you parse the html the next comes is the render tree so what is render tree so tell me this you guys know it's head tag right you guys know head tag where you'll have this title the uh, metadata like you import css over there you import fonts over there you import any other scripts over there right is that visible to you on the screen no right if you import css or let's say you write something on a meta tag right you provide a description to your website you provide title to your website you provide og image is that visible to you on the screen here of course not right so this this is not necessarily this is not necessary to be rendered right when i say render it's it's just like processing and then displaying the contents that are necessary to be shown on the screen okay so if i need to see this navbar sidebar and everything i just want to process only those things because those are the things that should be visible on the screen i should not touch other elements that's what's going to happen in render tree okay in the render tree all i'm going to see is the content inside the body so the content inside the head tag is not included they are omitted okay they are removed so render tree is also like a same tree you'll have like body here oops sorry 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 you'll have like a body here body okay and then yeah and what is the next tag so you'll have uh, same thing so we'll just copy this paste it here since it's the same thing i'll just uh, yeah okay so this is what render tree also looks like only the content that are that should be visible on the screen only they are included along with their styles okay so when when the browser hits the rendering rendering tree it it will already be finished with passing the css and html both so all the such styles will have their own css associated with it so body will have its own respective body styles 
so body styles would be what background color blue so body styles with background color blue here so body background color blue will be added and respect due to nav bar and everything all the styles will be added okay by the time it hits the rendering tree but in rendering tree what happens let's say for a div let's say section also has a div here another div which has a style called display none okay so here we'll add another style so we'll add another style here we'll call it as the class name would be uh, hide okay and the css property would be display none you guys know what is display none right nothing will be displayed so when render tree encounters this element okay when a render tree encounters an element with a display none property is going to remove that from the render tree it's going to not it's not going to include it it won't be visible to you because it won't be included in the render tree render tree only includes the content that are supposed to be visible on the screen okay for you for the naked eye or for the screen readers for people mm -hmm. who are blind they cannot see the screen right they'll have screen readers which going to read out the content inside a website so it will include the content where an eye can see or a screen reader can read out that's what render tree does for example let's say you have uh, another class name let's call this as sr only short form for screen reader only this will be visible none visible none so this is different from display none in display none you are removing the content entirely for both for us so the uh, even the eye cannot see it or the screen read, screen reader cannot read it it's completely gone it doesn't exist at all for visible you cannot it, it's not visible on the screen so people cannot see it but the screen reader can read it because for the it, it's only visible for the screen readers okay the content will be there but it's not displayed that's it and that content will be available let's say there is another div okay which has a class name of sr only but that will be included because the content exist it's for only screen readers uh, this is the class name you can see in tailwind lot of people actually use this okay and this this is a part of as accessibilities which we'll talk in the further episodes okay and this will be visible in render tree so remember again first come dom and csom where you map the styles and the html elements and then comes render tree where you remove the contents that are not meant to be visible on the screen you only keep the contents that are vis that should be visible on the screen okay great and then comes layouts layouts is where the position is calculated okay the position and the style is calculated okay for example i have a code here so let me pull up my code here all right let me pull up this side by side yeah okay so i have a simple html file here and uh, i have a simple uh, i opened it here as well okay now let's first write a layout okay so that we can actually see how the width is calculated so i'm going to just write the boilerplate that is html and i'm going i'm going to write the head tag as well i'm going to tell you why we need this head tag actually not the css we need the metadata width what is that uh, You don't need the head tag at all. We can write body. Oops, body, and here we go. Okay, so if I refresh, nothing happens. And if I had h1, oh sorry. I'm trying to keep this keyboard noise as much as low as possible, so I'm not able to type properly. Uh, Fe engineering episode one. Yeah, load fast. Oh, there was a delay in saving. Fe engineering episode one. Uh, sorry, two. Save this. Refresh the page here. All right, we got it. Fe episode two. Okay. Now I have a website here where I can get the CSS codes and everything faster. It's called CSS layout. CSS layout. Uh, yeah, CSS. This search CSS layout, and you have to scroll down for CSS layouts. Dot io. So this is the website I use a lot to basically get my layouts pretty quick. I just copy paste it and then the layout is done. So they have a lot of 
code really good code for the layouts so usually when i'm dealing with dashboards or sidebars and everything this is the first web page i visit so let's copy this holy grail okay holy grail this is one of the layout that we built for dual uh, in the learning platform okay so i'm going to copy this html i'm going to paste it here and then we need styles so i'm going to copy these styles i'm going to paste it in the head tag so let's add a head tag now okay we'll have styles paste it here okay so here uh, it has width of 25 percent for the left side one for the middle one there is no uh, width because it takes the remaining width okay and for the right one we have 20 percent so it's like 25 percent here 20 percent here and the whatever the width is remaining the middle one takes that okay so now we'll scroll down let's add content to the left sidebar so i'm gonna say left side content and then here we'll say right middle side middle side content or something and then at the end we'll say right side content so let's save this and if i go back refresh you can see something right but if there are not side to side but you can see the difference here so to make this better we'll add a background color so i'm gonna add a background color of uh, aquamarine here and a background color of indian red there are these are a bit subtle colors background color of light green and refresh there we go okay you can also add some padding so that we get properly visible i'm gonna say padding ram 10 ram it's a huge padding by the way there we go refresh that's it see as i increase increase my i mean if i increase the width you can see it's probably taking up the width right so now when I, when we hit the third phase that is layouts what happens is once you're done with the rendering tree right all these elements will have styles associated with it and you know that too and these styles will have width and height as well associated with them some might have 100 percent some might have 50 percent some might have like 200 pixels or 10 rem or something like that some might not have any width and height defined they'll use the default one they'll inherit the parent so now what happens is when you hit the layout the browser starts calculating the height and width okay and then starts placing them okay it uses something called box model box model okay the box model this will allow the browser to accurately calculate the height within the given screen okay if you're using a small screen or a bigger screen it accurately calculates the height okay depending on the brow window the viewport okay so that's how the whole thing is calculated so in the layout phase the browser is responsible to calculate the height and width so this is the width this particular navbar takes this is the height it takes this is the width and height it takes so similarly so it will calculate everything and places them places those elements and applies uh, with their styles okay in the appropriate positions along with their styles okay so this is very important where you have to understand the concept of viewport here viewport okay very important viewport what is viewport now did you see my browser if i if i just you know get this bit like you know if i shrink this you can see the 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 place here to display the contents changed it became very small and if i increase this it's going to increase similarly if i go to dual on dot tech right if i you can see if i just keep on getting this if i just keep on like you know lowering this you can see the you can see the shift in the contents right you can see the font change the font size changes the nav bar changes the contents are changing it's basically shifting and it's acting according to the viewport okay this is what viewport is the available width and the available height for the content to be displayed okay and pe where people can actually see so my viewport here is this much so right now i can see the logo on the nav bar till this afraid you're not good enough or no idea to start or something like that this is my viewport and this is the width and height i have in my viewport okay that's what the browser will consider while placing your elements okay and this is the reason why it's very crucial for you to build responsive website so that it's going to adapt to any size regardless of the viewport okay if the user is in using mobile or a big pc with like you know curved monitor it's going to adapt okay that's the reason you have to build responsive website and this is what layouts are layouts is nothing but finding the appropriate size and position and place the elements over there at last we have paint paint is nothing but pixelating everything 
okay so when i say pixelating it's going to properly assign pixels like you know if you have like 50% of the width it's going to take up a 50% of those pixels okay all your monitor or your pc is made up of tiny particle called pixels okay so pixels are nothing but like a dot so if you have like a big curve monitor or something it's made up of tiny dots like this pixels tiny dots okay i cannot do the dot properly here but assume it okay tiny pixels and if you say 22 px in css is 22 pixels so in paint all these are properly assigned a pic properly takes up the required amount of pixels like you know you'll have the background colors and all those colors painted you'll have the font assigned basically all those things will happen okay and this is also a crucial part at the end okay got it so this is what oh it's low okay this is how your entire website is rendered the four steps four crucial steps okay and when you are optimizing your website think about all these steps do you have a lot of contents that are marked as uh, display none if it is remove it if you have a dead code remove it because that will speed up the dom and csom process and rendering tree process and if you have a lot of layouts without properly height and width and basically if you have a lot of images where you don't define proper height and width to it please optimize them please define height and width so that the layout can be faster so the browser doesn't have to go to this trouble of defining uh, you know trying to figure out those things to you okay and if you have a lot of uh, uh, overriding styles or a lot of animations try to avoid it so that the paint will be faster okay and then you can think about re-rendering in react or uh, using memo in react something like that okay and uh, at last i was just wanted to show you like how the things work in real time okay so we have this website right so let's actually test this so i can go to dev tools let me zoom in my dev tools a bit okay and i can go to performance yeah performance and i can click on record button here there's a record button i click on this record i refresh the page okay so the page is refreshed i click on stop okay it's going to load the profile hold on for a few minutes sorry seconds or oh, microseconds there we go so we got the report here okay let's scroll down to main so there should be a main somewhere let me zoom out a bit yeah here we go main okay let me get this on top there we go so here we have a lot of phases that we just discussed and there are some other phases as well which don't worry okay there's a lot of phases here that we just discussed we'll see how much time did the website take to actually do those steps let me if you you can use this mouse button to zoom in okay so here we have first thing is we have past html basically dom construction okay so this one took around how much 672 milliseconds so how much is that it's 0.67 seconds so this html which has around 5 to 6 lines of code like was passed around 5 to 6 0.6 seconds less than a, less than a second and then we have uh, to, to where is the layout and then we have calculating evaluating script so basically uh, there even though you might not have a script in html the browser might have some scripts right to support latest javascript or maybe something so the, those are the scripts it's going to be loading it browser will be loading it which took around 0.29 millisecond which is less than, which can be like 0.000 something seconds and we have style calculation and then here we have layout okay and which took around 0.16 millisecond which is 160 microseconds basically yeah okay less than which very faster because we don't have much css code right and layout is pretty defined already so it's fast at last we have uh, pre paint which took around microseconds 73 microseconds which is lesser than mini uh, milliseconds okay so it's very fast this website is very fast right because we have very less code let's go to dual on dot tech and do the same thing so i'm going to open up the dev tools record load it reload it so hold on we are dependent on couple of other website you can see it's waiting for uh, some other websites as well to get the images the company details and everything our hiring partners so those websites are blocking us so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just stop this and uh, 
hold on until it gets me the report you will see a very big report here because it's a complete website right we have an animations we have a lot of colors on the background we have some scripts like analytic scripts and everything so it's going to give us a good report there we go man this looks so big all right we have in the we're in the main and uh, here we can see the past html here so I click on this it took around 1.7 seconds so i click on this you can see 1.75 seconds to parse the html construct the dom and everything and we have we have some scripts that was uh, triggered basically some analytic scripts and everything and then we have layout and there are multiple layout uh, uh, shifts here uh, you can see here if i do here this should be another layout cause or something yeah there is another layout okay which took 23 milliseconds one layout and then there's also here another layout right which take 0.14 milliseconds the reason why this happens is because uh, we have couple of scripts right which includes uh, some it injects some styles and contents as well okay to the web page so what happens is whenever the new thing is, is appearing so the dom has to reconstruct the tree do the layout thing again to figure out everything so that's the reason you might see multiple layouts coming in okay but at the end you can see the website was rendering pretty fast okay and then there are a couple of things here there are so many anonymous scripts loaded these are like font scripts or the image scripts or some backlinks okay they keep on loading it this is because the browser keeps caching everything so and it doesn't happen to uh, like you know it doesn't happen simultaneously it happens parallelly because browser knows if it does everything in a linear way it's going to block the rendering so what it does is it going to just render the crucial things and then at this side parallelly it's going to render all the backlinks the fonts the other styles the scripts and all those things that we have added okay and in an ideal world this is how we do it because you might have so many things right you might have these logos you might have these uh, partners logos coming in you might have these reviews coming in from a different source you have you might have those you know, like this we have this github and uh, linkedin urls right so they they are the backlinks they have to be back set up at all set up as well so all these will be loaded parallelly and this is how a real world website works right you'll have a lot of links you'll have a lot of sources the way data comes in and everything so the way you do is you first render the crucial part you define you write your code that way you render the crucial part and then you can take care of the backlinks and everything later okay and this is not a very complex thing to do you don't have to do much thing use a semantic html use html5 it will take care of everything okay that's the first step that you might have to do some more things like define proper width and height and everything but we'll we'll learn that that's what front end master class is for okay with that said uh that's it for today guys uh hope you guys were able to understand these four steps okay where how the website renders this for front end ep episode 2 front end engineering episode 2 if you have any doubts do reach me out and if you're not in the front end engineering sorry duo engineering group it's a whatsapp group where the chat en enabled for everyone you can chat with us directly the duo group that you are in if you are in right now where you cannot chat where it's only admin only is because to avoid spam but in case if you want to chat and i don't want and when i say chat i'm um, we are allowing this for this this particular privilege to you guys is because we believe you want to learn and then you want to do something okay so we are opening the chats for you guys so that you can come and interact with others as well as us so please don't spam in that group if you want to join uh, just I, there's a link in the description you can just click on it we'll add you to that okay there's a job board as well in case if there's any job we'll add there we'll post it as well and if you guys have want to hang out chill with other people or network with others you can just drop a message there if you have any questions you can drop a message there you can also drop in discord or my whatsapp i we believe the reason why we made whatsapp is because that's easily accessible for many of you and uh, anyway it works you can feel free to drop it in discord as well or in whatsapp it works either ways okay so with that said thank you so much guys i'll see you in episode 3 bye